So, I'm here in my favourite place, one of my favourite places anyway, and I'm in County Mayo and I'm fishing in 15 metres of water. And I'm after rays or whatever swims past. I'm going to fish down. The tide is just in now. It's the, the first tide in the spring cycle of this month. And yeah, I fished here before on this type of a tide and it was hectic, really hectic. And my knee has put on my sunglasses. Yeah. Anyway, but I've only fished this place four or five times anyway. And that's no way to gauge what a place has to offer. So we're gonna see what happens here. That rig I just put out there had mackerel on it, on a dingle dangle, a circle hook 5 out and it was my up and over ring rig. First of all, I'll do the rods. They're the Sonics. Uh, SK4, they cast from four to seven ounces. And we got the Meg 525, yes. And they're loaded with 40 pound braid, four strand, four strand leaders, 100 pounds. We'll put out the next one. I'll run you through that as well. And then we'll put out that bait. Okay. So this is the bait. I'll show you how to do this. That was cut from a frozen bait. And there's the bite trace there, right? It's just a piece of wire. And then up there is the swivel. There's the bead for the lead line. And there's the lead. Okay. Oh, it's got real windy. And you just take that and you clip it on there like that. Okay, yes. It's just to stop it from unclipping when you cast because uh, usually the rig body's there and it pushes it off as it transitions from the push to the pull. Okay, and we've got a fish apparently already. So it's first cast fish as well. <laughs> Straight into a fish, first cast. Yeah, we're on. Probably just a dogfish, but it's good to open with a fish anyway. Yeah, it's a doggy. This is one of the few places in Ireland where dogfish actually give you a bit of a scrap. But I'm going with dog. <laughs> the curse. Never say what it's going to be, Bill. You get spanked every time. Oh, no, this time I'm right. Here's the doggy. Oh, look at him go. Oh, he's come off as well. Excellent buzz. <laughs> okay. So we might as well introduce you to this rig. This one is the up and over ring rig. I have a tutorial on this as well. You can watch it. It's just an up and over. Married with some South African know-how. And some of my know-how too. Makes it fish like uh, the big game over there. We sort him out afterwards. We get this one in the sea. Oh, the wind is howling. So we get the big game settled in. And then we get the other one back in the water. Nice. It's pretty hard to keep a bait in the water here, so with all the dogs and the straps and everything else. But there are some good fish in here uh, to be whittled out of it. So you're pretty busy when you're here. So I can tell right now that the tide is on the way out because this place does this weird thing. When the tide comes in, it blows in, and when the tide goes out, it blows out, so. As fortune would have it, or bad fortune would have it, I've had the fishing, the fishing's been pretty dire lately. I've had a couple of nice pollock, and uh, a lot of dogfish, and some other stinky stuff. And while I'm on this, I met this, these two guys down at Kerry, three guys, in actual fact. It was Mick Francis, Troy, his son, and a guy they call Jerry. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Mick for supplying the bait for this video. So, Mick, if you're watching, thank you very much, brother. So, I'll just give you a scope. Karuk. Seagull. Lads catching nothing. Mayo Mountains. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so I'm going to show you his new bait. This is the rig. This is the um, big game. South African, that's a 6 so mustad hook and that's the 80 pound bite trace there. So this is frozen. <laughs> so it's a bit hard to get a bait out of it. So what the South Africans do, this isn't my deal, this is their deal. They cut cutlets like this. 
you know, um, equal numbers, because they need to be equal numbers. So we'll do six. And it's a really good way to do baits. It really is. It's fantastic. So we do we do six cutlets. And you can see you're looking at it, you're going, how the hell is that going to work? But well, you'll find out now. You just get it, you put it on like this, right? The first one. You kind of build it on top of this, right? Then you take the next one. Now the whole the whole thing is, right, to keep the, the fat end down the bottom of the bait so it's aerodynamic, okay? That's it. And in between the beads, as usual. You can see the shape it's making, right? And you just build it up like this. You take the next one, you put it on top of that one. And if it's really frozen and it won't shape itself, you just squeeze it with your hands. And it's good. So you just continue in that fashion until you're happy with the size of your bait. And they are so aerodynamic when they're finished. They cast better than anything I've ever seen. You can get huge baits to go a very long way. So little resistance because of the shape. Like a raindrop. A uh, raindrop's terminal velocity is dictated by its shape. And it's a good shape for baits as well. Bit of science there, you know. So that's it there. Here we go. That's a nice bait there. Very aerodynamic. Yes. So, next bait. So he's just making a real mess of this now he is. That's no Ray anyway. There's one of these hyperactive dogs they got here. The dogfish get the zoomies here, they do. Whoa, turn around the place. <laughs> Great stuff. Not like Dublin dogs, right? All lazy and full of fast food and stuff. Whatever the stuff they could find with rubbish out of the harbors and stuff. They're fit and full of vigor and vitality here. <laughs> That's right. West Coast drum. That's what they eat. Is he still there? Let's see. Yeah, we're in. Here comes the leader. Where's the fishy? What have we got? It's a bloody dogfish. <laughs> That's the thing with these Canamara dogs. They ain't half scrap, man. He's, he's quite a good specimen for a doggy. So there's your man there. There's the decent dog there anyway. And the circle, always in the lip. There we go. Anyway, there you go, buddy. <laughs> Goodbye. Depressingly, a dogfish, but it's better than nothing. And honestly, it is better than nothing. Yeah, we got another bait on. Let's see if we get another fish on. So this is the next bait. So they're quite big baits, so I'm trying to keep the dogs off. And a lot of missed bites, but in this place I need to do this, otherwise I'll just be reeling in dogfish all the time. If they don't get it in their mouths, I can just leave it there for a while and eventually I'll get something decent as the bait shrinks down. Because it's latex elastic and uh, as the bait defrosts and gets smaller, it pulls down on itself. The normal bait elastic you get, which is nylon elastic, it doesn't. It has a bit of stretch in it, but not that much. So at a point it will stop contracting and the bait will just come apart and the fish will have their way with it. But with the latex, it works much, much better. So we pitched this one out, wish the wind would drop. I would like a little bit more distance, although you don't need it, but it's always fun. There we go. So we're gonna bite on the right hand rod again. I think this one might be a ray. Because it's not going all jiggly, it's just pu it's just uh, pushing down and stuff. So I think we might have a ray on this time, not a dog. So we're just gonna watch it now. Let's do its thing. Because if you don't know what rays and all the rest of it, you can watch that behind me there. What I'm talking. If you don't know what rays and stuff like that, uh, they come and they land on the bait first of all, and they try to get it into their face. And sometimes it can take them a few attempts, especially with a big bait. But a torn back, I mean. I mean, they take, they can get huge baits into their mouths. It quite, quite, it astonishes me sometimes. Is he on yet? Useless. Why do I bring you with me? Keep your eye on the job, will you? Fish on both rods now. Yep. So, uh, what do you do? <laughs> Panic! That's right. You see if he's on, will you? I've never caught a horse here. I don't know why there isn't. I haven't caught a horse here yet because there's straps and there's rays and there's dogs. So there should be some horse here as well. But I haven't had one yet. Well, he's fighting really hard anyway. Here he comes. 
What have we got? Comes later anyway. Another dog, man. He scrapped, man. These dogs really got some poke on them. I can't believe it. There's no way I would have thought that that was a dog. Woohoo! He's a decent size, all right, though. <laughs> That's the biggest dog fish I've ever got. Size him! If I injure one, I might have to eat it. It's a decent sized dog. The circles, always in the lip. There you go. Can we get him back as well? Bye, Mr. Dogfish. No dogfish harmed. Bye. <laughs> they got some poke. There's one thing I noticed about this place. The straps and the rays kind of came as a package. And the dogs like either end of the scale there. So I'm just getting dogged to hell here. So I think I'm going to save my bait, call it a night. And we'll pick this up on another mark, another place. Next time I turn the camera on, we're going to be somewhere else. Okay. So as promised, a new place, but I'm still in Mayo, I think. I'm near a town called Roundstone. We've got this nice rock mark here. It's flooding tide. And we're after some pollock. We're after some bait, that'd be a mackerel. And we've got some good water out in front of us. 12 meters kind of a deal. That's a 30 gram slow jig with twin assists. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. On oh, my head you go where you're supposed to be. Let's get some fishing done, okay? <laughs> So he's already up there now. Fantastic stuff. Now, if he's any good, you'll get me a fish the first go. So far, it seems to be sand anyway, which is kind of good, kind of bad. So it wasn't first cast fish anyway. The wind's on me back, so casting isn't an issue here today. I'm going to do a review on this Daiwa Laguna LT4000 Stroke C because it is a fantastic reel and it didn't cost hardly any money at all and I think a lot of people will enjoy it it's a fantastic reel it's not heavy not expensive fantastic drag on it so I've been using this Laguna for about 6 months or something I think I really like it right we're going to see if we can get out there See if we can get a fish. So next spot, a little bit more exposed. It might be more deeper water. I have to watch me back though. There's a big trench behind me there. So I have to keep an eye on that. So next jig, a silver you pundi, 25 gram. They're cheap. I don't mind losing them. So we'll go out here, we give it a flick. Let's see how we get on. We're in. <laughs> yes. Feels like a mackerel. No bloody time. What have we got? No, it's a little pollock. He put up a count for himself anyway, I'll tell you that much. Why couldn't you be just be a mackerel? Stop messing me around. There you go. He's pretty. Very pretty. But there's one, there's more. Goodbye. <laughs> nice. So, he took that with a vengeance, he did. So they're out there somewhere, would appear. So we put out another one, see if we get slammed again. Well, if that's the starter fish, there's gotta be some decent ones out there. We get it in. Try again. Oh, that's the wrong place.
Right, uh, get out of here. Yeah, let's see if we can get out of here. Without we'll getting wet. Yeah, it would look like it would be alright. This is uh, where I came across. And you can see you have to go now. And there we go. No problems. So, made it off to Devil's Island, unscathed. So, a new spot. See if we get a fishy. We come into the bay on this headland. Maybe there's a mackerel out here or something. Giant sand deal. We're in? Yep, we got a good fish. <laughs> Ah well, got some scrap in them anyway. What is it? Garfish? What is it? It's a garfish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you come off! <laughs> Turn <Terrifying>. back. <laughs> okay, it's a garfish. Well, okay. It's been a while. More weeds. Ah, there goes that lure. So. After those two miserable fish. When I turn the camera back on, you'll be somewhere new and enthused and you'll be happy just like me. Okay? Yes. So, um, after bait for a bait rod session, it's not gone too well. Anyway, but uh, we give it a shot. We'll pick up a pollock, that'll also be good too. A cold fish or something, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, we get a jig in the water and we see how we get on. Okay. Working my behind off all day, haven't had many fish at all. Small pollock and garfish. That's it. It's looking pretty bleak for old Billy. So we get a cast out. It's nearly high water. Uh, 30 gram slow jig. UV twin assists. Oh. Oh, I thought it was going to hit the boat. <laughs> if I hit it any harder, I would have. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's really nice here tonight. Last night it was crappy. Yeah, now it's really nice. And I feel mackerel in the air. There has to be a mackerel out here somewhere. Anyway, so we put some distance on it. Let's see how we get on. Boom. There's a fish. <laughs> Are you still there now? find out. Cast right on top of the way, you see. Nope, I did not. That's a big jellyfish. You won't get that in me fishing line. Well, I love this place. We're in. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Knew there's a fish there. Haven't got a clue what it is. Ah, oh, look at all the little fish underneath the jellyfish. <laughs> look at them all. Cool. What have we got? Mackerel. Please be a mackerel. A little mackerel. You're mine. <sighs> Big time. <laughs> See if we get another one. <laughs> Maybe it's upside down. Look at there. Oh, the wee lads are underneath them again, look. Look at them all. There's millions of them. that word here so I've had no fish in a long time I think it's time go and make some food so that's it for me it's been a rubbish few days here in Mayo <laughs> I'm struggling it's not Mayo's fault anyway so yes yeah, some dogs some garfish some little pollock and a mackerel yeah pretty rubbish but as always we fish on I'm Billy 
this Billy and Mayo not doing too good wherever you are in the world. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.